good afternoon this would be a comprehensive review for my Moore GE100 multi-fx processor it is really a cheap multi-fx processor so back in I bought this two years ago back in 2018 um, as gift for myself uh, I would love to, va to buy a multi-fx processor with a built-in uh, FX pedal, uh, expression pedal. So, it, uh, how I acquired this, it's a long story. But basically, um, during my birthday, 2018, I asked for my brother for a gift um, this um, FX pedal for my guitar practicing. It so happened that that time, there was a sale in Lazada and the price that time for this um, FX pedal is around 2500 it was way way cheaper than the current price of 35 although it's a small um, effect pedal um, it is um, it, it has a very very ex expansive or what, what term could it be a very very um, wide uh, wider scope wider wider options for you to explore as a guitarist so before I would um, make a demo I will just explain to um, briefly the parts uh, for this demo I'm using uh, just a cheap amplifier here at my side then the parts of this um, guitar pedal is the expression pedal there is a uh, another cheaper version of this type of multi effects pedal the <coughs> the Moore PE100 the one um, smaller, different design, and without the expression pedal. So, it has multiple buttons. Um, these two buttons, um, basically, um, it is used um, to scroll up and down the different presets. Down, up. Then, this mode button <coughs> you turn the knob for different um, effects first is the effects option which includes the compressor the booster the flanger even the tremolo pedal wa auto monkey slow engine For compressor next the distortion option gives you different um, distortions amp simulator the noise gate function and what are other yeah it's for the noise gate alone the EQ option Actually, it's only a three band EQ. This button here, when you press um, and select um, the effects, it would it would turn on and off the effects. On off the modulation, the delays, and the reverb and the drum function so beside me is an RP55 I'm using it to reroute my signal to my zoom right there over there and going it out um, routing it out to my um, base amp so since uh, as I have mentioned previously I'm a one man band so I'm I love to experiment a uh, wider range of frequencies with just one guitar. So on with the in-depth demo. I will, because this video is just raw um, and we have low budget for it, I'll just use this as to um, place my cell phone for the demo.
So I'm just using uh, a cheap amplifier because I'm here at the rural area. Um, this is just my travel rig that I'm using. So as a disclaimer, I'm just using a cheap amplifier for this demo, but hope it would um, give an insight on how this um, cheap uh, multi-effects pedal work. So I'll just position it here. Hopefully it won't fall. So just like my previous video, um, when I was um, doing a demo for my RV55 by Digitech, I usually mimic how I would love to play in the gig. So um, never mind the name of the preset, but I usually set this as a quiet, as a pause in between preset. So no matter how. So, this here, never mind the name, but it's a, a stop over or a stopping point um, to compartmentalize my um, effects. So, the usual, the usual settings I do is um, a clean tone, or almost clean, then an overdrive. Or distorted tone. Then a uh, space in between. Again, a cleaner tone whether it's modulated. And an overdrive tone. Again, this put uh, never mind the name, but it's uh, actually a post tone. Clean. Overdrive. So, at least this one, the name is all So, we'll find somewhere up here. In pause, loose rock, easy drive, low clean, another pause, touch clean, drive, drive, clean, pause wall. So, let's use this confused room as a as a as demo for the effects um, for us to um, tweak. So, the first part again is the effects. This includes the compressor. Again, it just it only has um, volume, the attack, and the sustain. Sometimes the volume is the threshold. Before anything else, I will turn up all other effects noise gate EQ tremolo off analog delay off reverb off so a compressor so what you do is the, for example this is the compressor then you turn this on or off Then to change to tweak it, you just use this and press. Again, just press, press, press. So let's try a higher volume. So, medyo muddy siya. Lower volume at around 30. So you'll see the difference. Okay, so let's set the volume to 80. Next, the attack. The attack is how soon the compressor will take effect with regards to the signal. So, if for example you strum hard, how, how soon 
compressor it could take effect so lesser attack it means it would act, act soon it will be compressed higher attack personally for a beginner um, knowing the difference um, whether a compressed sound is compressed or not is really slight um, but for an advanced or intermediate you could really see the difference if there is a compression um, the compressor is used in the, in the signal chain next is the sustain and how long the notes would remain for example at a low sustain does not sustain the tone so again the compressor is something that you use um, for an advanced guitarist it would really matter especially um, the sustain part the sustain usually is um, sample is uh, one of the parameters you use um, for soloing because the higher sustain you maintain the notes sample I'll make the sustain on full. So the time before the note fades out is longer. It really matters when um, you are creating a solo, especially a um, solo that 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 needs sustained notes, or even the those notes that needs bending. So the next would be the let's, let's turn this up the boost the flex boost and the the flex boost is uh, a booster you will see the difference I'll fix the I'll put the volume on high and put the drive on 20 and even the tone So when you turn on the boost, it adds a little more punch to the signal. Original sound, the dry sound. So let's focus more on the depth. At 
lower deck. Higher deck. So the mix is the mixture between the plunger and the, the dry signal and the plunger wet signal. So if you decrease the this is the dry signal. This is the dry signal. This is at fifty. the sound is from less crunchier lesser crunch I mean Always remember the tone is for how bright or how shiny the um, the tone is or how, or how dark 
So let's start with the tremolo at the lower speed. Again, the tremolo is the in and out of volume, and it depends how deep is that is that in and out of volume movement is volume in volume out, and it depends on the speed. So this is the highest depth. This is how it sounds. Let's set it to a lower. Next, the speed. So you, you saw it in a lower speed. So what would happen if you increase the speed? This is how it would sound. It's better if we increase the depth so you can see how does it sound. See? The fa the fa it's how fast you put the volume up and down. So the speed. You can, if you um, would like to recall um, during the demo of the RP55 by Digitech, the speed here is so fast than the, the one we had put on demo during the Digitech uh, video, uh, RP55 video. So let's turn this off. The phaser, it's the pacing sound. Still, the depth, how depth is the pacing sound. Um, how to interpret pacing in words is very um, complicated. Um, it includes some um, math with regards to frequency, but more likely, if you interpret, um, you explain it through sounds, it sounds like this. If you search basically is um, with a given tone and you mix it with um, a tone uh, which has higher frequency than the original tone and if you mix it, it would create a pacing sound. It depends how far um, that pacing sound is and it's usually calculated um, through um, per second. So for example, I'll put it down to one. Or I put it up. Pacing sound is still the speed, it depends. Higher speed. And again, the mix um, for the purpose of um, cutting the video short. Um, the mixture of the dry and wet signal. Oops. The pedal wa. It depends on the pedal. So it's as uh, 
creates a wah sound. It depends on the depth and the range and the tone. It's basically for me uh, a pedal wah is a pacer which you have a control in it on the pedal. Next is the monkey. Um, automatic you don't need to use the pedal the touch wa the touch wa depends on how um, of course the depth um, the wa and the tone again um, for simplicity the tone is how dark or how bright is the tone is so let me get bright and the sensitivity depends on the amount of force you strum which would affect the wa sound if I you if you strum it lightly compared to if you strum it hard Also depend on the, the sensitivity will depend on how strong you strum yeah and the attack is on how immediate the effect would be the slow engine for me for this pedal is same as the swelling sound in the RP55 Again, the compressor. So that's what it affects. So it depends how many effects is that within. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten effects. So ten options. Next, the distortion, the flex boost. Actually, it's same with the booster, kanina, but earlier. But imagine if you have let's do it. if you have the pure boost here and you put the flex boost, it's imagine that you have a two booster which boosts the signal. So basically in the distortion part of the effects includes um, the drive and different distortions, the text boost, the preamp um, overdrive, the tube drive. As you can see, as I turn the knob, it, the, um, it remains um, the volume, master volume, the drive, how crunchy and how dark or how um, light the tone is. So, the tube drive, everything in 50 the juicer drive later i will put in the description below the uh, the manual for this next level so you could uh, discover um which type of drive um this um these uh are based on the vintage, vintage overdrive the super drive, if I recall correctly, this is the big map drive. Again, refer to the manual. The blink drive. A split drive. Almost the same. But it depends. The modern overdrive uh, is the modern tube screamer. If I recall, um, this modern overdrive is based on the overdrive by Boss. Again, 
the classic overdrive by uh, if I recall correctly the big mom or the, no it's the classic overdrive the orange one by Boston the orange overdrive <laughs> distortion Modern distortion, fast. For me, uh, if I describe what fast is, it's something like um, an overdrive with an extended octaver. Uh, whether it is um, low or high, or it depends. Again, um, for me, fast is um, it's the sound when you put an overdrive, then also put an octaver to the sound. Face to us. Okay. The bend bus. The whole fuzz. As you can see. Metal. So in the distortion effect alone, it has really a lot of option. It even has an option for the acoustic. more than 20 different um, options for distortion and overdrives. Next is the amp simulator. I'll turn this on. Um, the levels includes um, the lev um, the knobs that you will found that you will find in the amps. This is based from the Pender Clean. Fender Jazz, the Fender Bassman, the British um, Stock, the British 800, the USA, the Black Stock. So, all in all, just um, how many amplifiers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7. 7 amplifiers, all in all. Next would be the I'll put it on the fender clip. The noise clip. So, like what I have previously discussed in the R55, the noise gate um, would um, limit the noise, the hum. Um, since this is a multi effects processor, it um, it do um, the effect digitally, um, artificially, unlike when you have the analog noise gate pedal um, it also has a different um, way of manner of how it uh, decrease the hum the humming sound so just um, for demo purpose okay the humming sound if I increase the threshold threshold again since it do this um, artificially what happened is uh, it does not completely uh, remove the humming sound because it's uh, digital. Um, unlike the, the idea is um, in the analog, um, the noise gate um, would re um, 
cut the signal and transfer the signal usually um, electromagnetically uh, it's really hard to explain but if you put some uh, further research on the noise gate on how the analog noise gate would work um, we would understand how it decreases the humming sound in your signal chain <coughs> next the EQ it's a three band EQ um, from in what I have understand is this is uh, the middle so if you for example increase this uh, 160, 103.2k imagine um, if, for example this is flat if you increase 160, the 160 would raise but it would still have uh, a mountain, uh, a curb, uh, curb um, EQ so it bring back um, if you increase the 160 it would also bring um, bring up the um, um, the the amount of EQ surrounding 160 so by increments of 12 I'll show so it shows a dark BC sound because it's the lower frequency if I decrease this to still here the low frequency but not as much as the low frequency compared to if you for example maintain the 800 the middle to which is the middle frequency or if you maintain the But again, it is limited because it's just three band. So one of the limitations of this um, kinds of uh, multi FX processor. Next is the modulation. If you recall correctly, tremolo is also part in the FX. So tremolo, the pitch shifting, uh, tremolo, the step pacer, the pacer, the T flanger, the flanger, the chorus, the stutter, the ring modulation, and the filter, the vibrato and the pitch shifting so the idea is there are some important effects here for example if you um, use flanger here so you can still use the tremolo here in the modulation area or if you use the tremolo here if you also want to use the pacer together with the tremolo you can access it here in the modulation area so um, briefly the pitch how deep the shifting is and the degree of the shifting is here negative 12 is one octave what is um same as the rp55 it's a mixed sound so the original dry mix is also still included so you cannot use this um, if you want to purely ship the notes because you would still hear the dry signal together with the ship that pitch one octave um let's put it um eight half tones the um increments is by uh semitones so if you recall it's it, it's the fifth so it could mimic uh, power chords I have 
seen this uh, video in uh, YouTube, uh, why change the tuning if you could use pitch shifting? Because pitch shifting is really there's the sound of um, artificial notes, uh, shifting of notes. It's like it's the same feeling when you hear a singer being auto tuned. It's so unnatural. Uh, let's try E. Um, e flat D D C sharp then one note lower when you play faster the shifting process cannot be met as fast as you play of the pitch the vibrato the vibrato is on the tune if the tremolo is on the volume the vibrato is on the tune so the depth how out of tune it is the level of the vibrato and of course the speed so I'll set it at 50 the level of vibrato more of um you can equate this to mix the there's a certain dry signal left and also the by the effects that was given <laughs> It's like the sound when imagine you how to show the different notes the chainsaw. It's more of a, a vibrato effect, a, a tremolo effect, but with an irregular shape, irregular depth. Despite the um, the depth side here, but there is a variation, a variation in the depth. Unlike in the tremolo, the depth is uniform, but here. You say when you say it's deeper, but it's different levels of deeper, 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 more deep, deeper, deeper. Although it's um, it's um, kinda uh, uh, a wrong usage of grammar, but that's the way how I understand it, how to explain it. The chorus. <laughs> mixing together different um, note 
giving it the chorus effect. The flanger, I have explained earlier. The T flanger is the combination of the tremolo effect and the flanger effect. would be the delay so the level of the delay how then if there's an analog dynamic tape echo the echo the reverse delay and the digital so I'll demo on the analog first the level is how How clear you hear the delayed effect? Well, the feedback. <coughs> the feedback is how many times it is repeated. Let's see. The higher the feedback, the higher the the many times it is repeated. Lower the feedback. Well, the time is how long before the feedback decays. You can um, put it on infinite. Stop tempo here. You could um, you tap double tap, so the time between is the how much time you want the feedback in um, the time between the feedback to do. So longer, faster, as you can see. Um, explanation for the reverb it's how the sound sounds 
depending on your location, whether in the room, in the hall, in the church, whether you are surrounded by plates. That's how I explain it, but it's beyond that explanation. Spring reverb, it's still beyond that explanation. Um, the, the explanation for spring again is um, you take um, you take it's unnatural because you take away the dry signal the tear river again the room so the level is basically let's uh, let's use the hall as an example the level is how imagine a hall how big the hall is bigger hall help the turn of the delay or make it faster bigger hole or try bigger church imagine a cathedral as you play with the dry signal um, it will immediately bounce back at a higher level or a larger church imagine if it's just a small cut chapel K is how how loud the signal would came back would come back when it bounces through the walls of the church. So a weak weak volume, higher volume, higher decay. The tone is how bright for how dark the signal is. So that's the effects loop signal chain. Then the drums. You could choose how. For to access the drums, you use this rhythm section. Then you could choose the volume or other. You can access drums or the metronome. You could also adjust the tempo. Or you could use the stop tempo. Same as how you use the delay. You could choose different beats. A total of forty different drum patterns. And after all that you did. turn of the rhythm you could save here and you type your um, user present again then you save again so it's here there are 80 user presets and 80 built-in presets that you cannot tweak There's also this pedal option. You have the choice if you want the pedal to be on the game signal. Or the wa. Okay, bang. Of course, well, um, what the pedal was used 
originally for the war. So, and of course, the loop looper. There's a 180. There's a 180 sign, uh, seconds for the loop.